Y'all, I for serious have a problem. As you can see, maybe you can't see, I've got three Crayola watercolor sets on this table. We've got the original washable eight. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, eight. We've got the Crayola Education watercolors, extra bright and blendable, which are basically the same colors in the eight. And that's what we're gonna be reviewing today. Then, I'm, I'm a bad person, then, I went and got the Crayola Education Watercolors Mixing Set. Now you see, I thought this set was this set. No, there's apparently a whole other set too. And this is also eight colors. And uh, you guys can see it's still messy because I did a uh, swatch and unbox, which you guys can check out by clicking here. But what's different about this set is you get two reds, the same yellow, two blues, a black, and a white. So we've got three Crayola washable sets just here on the table. I have another set, a set of 24, that I did a challenge with. There is a problem with me and I desperately need your help. Well, actually, I desperately need you guys to share these videos with friends, family, anybody who's interested in either buying art supplies for themselves and they really don't wanna spend any money at all, or they wanna buy art supplies for a kid in their life. Like I said today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Crayola Education watercolors and hopefully it will perform better than the Crayola Original 8 watercolors. So we have a super cute illustration of Kara, the main character from my webcomic, 7-inch Kara, which is all ages appropriate and you can read it at 7inchkara.com or you can read it at 7inchkara.tumblr.com and then you can subscribe. But I'm gonna erase all these pencils in a snap and attach it to this piece of masonite and then we can go ahead and get started. All right, so before we can really get started in earnest, I want to do a little test because I'll show you guys in a moment, but these colors leaked. And something else I noticed about these, I noticed this actually after I did the, uh, the test for praying. Da -da -da -da. And look, look how cute. You can't see it, but it says Crayola. I thought that was pretty cute. So you can actually order um, three sets of these online. So I've got my spare. So I'm gonna just move that over out of the way. Now go ahead. Put a dab into each. They are supposed to be brighter blendable colors, so we'll see. Could happen. And just like with the prank set, we can zoom, 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 zoom in for you guys. I just want to make sure that if it lost a little bit of glycerin, it's not going to ruin them. So far, everything's looking okay. So had someone, I, I, this person here, I had someone warn me that these are not as good, or no, dang it, why am I even saying this? Uh, huh, brain is all over the place today. I had someone warn me that these will, if not properly stored, the glycerin will start to fall out. Um, so I would just keep that in mind for any children's watercolor. So they all look okay. This is my yellow and it had some green in it. So I cleaned it out. They're all looking good. So I think we're ready to begin. And what I did with my, some of my other, many of my other, what I did with many of my other tests is I went ahead and I mixed my colors that's not gonna work. I mixed my colors on the, that thing. All right, so I'm gonna try, I'm always trying new things and I'm always trying to do things a little bit differently. Um, but I do think we should start with the skin first. It seems like a good place to start. And I have all of this glycerin just kind of like hanging out there. So I'm gonna try to avoid it and maybe we'll live a life of regrets. We'll find out together, right guys? 
how this goes, right? And on that piece of paper I just showed you guys, I will do a little bit of swatching on there. And if I need more, I will swatch elsewhere. So grabbing some yellow, grabbing some orange, grabbing some red. Now these are supposed to be more saturated. Grabbing a little brown and mixity mix, 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 mix. And then we've got our paper. And that looks like it might be a good start. I'm gonna try, I always say this, and I'm always lying. I'm going to try to keep my colors nice and light. We'll see. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the shadows and then hopefully, fingers crossed in all, I will do a little bit, a little bit of blending. But as you guys saw, mixing a light skin tone was very easy. Okay. And I'm gonna try to zoom in for y'all. And I'm using a really little, 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 it is a Kalinsky Red Sable. So it's a mix of nice brushes and I apologize. But don't worry, you can head on over to my aspiring artist watercolor section at natosoup.blogspot.com and you can find out all sorts of great watercolor tips, tricks, and tidbits for your kiddo watercolorist. And if you are looking for a watercolor set for yourself, maybe you want to start to learn, I have a beginner gift guide as well and I will link both of those in the description or maybe in the cards, or maybe in both, both in the description and in the cards. And I'm just using regular, a little too much regular water to blend that out. And hopefully, hopefully, dopefully, we'll end up with something that will work. Notice how careful she is but it is a decent initial color, so I'm happy. I've had so many of these where, where they were like seriously hot messes. So I'll take what I can get. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. I'm gonna go in and attempt to do the next layer with the same color. We'll see how this goes. And I think, I think I'm finally gonna learn my lesson and not do the purple shading because it just really does not work super well with these cheaper watercolor brands. And you know, it gets kind of tiring having stuff get ruined like that. So we're gonna opt to skip it. All right, I think that is about that can go ahead and maybe let this next layer dry and I'll zoom in so you guys can see real quick. All right guys, so I don't know if you can see it, but we definitely have some interesting <laughs> problems going on here. I'm gonna try to fix them early. Maybe I can I can be successful in that, but maybe not. We'll, we'll see, right? We'll see. Basically the second layer dried a lot darker than the first layer, which is okay in some areas, but in other areas, it's just like, no, why? It tends to be on the face where it, it tends to be the worst. So I'm gonna fix those up a little bit, go in and add another layer of a chaw. And then I think, I think I'm gonna leave her alone because I've ruined so many of these. And not that the intention is to have a perfect, a perfect piece every time, but the intention is also not to consistently make garbage looking things that I'm ashamed of while still doing a decent field test. All right, so zooming all the way out. I do apologize for that. I'm gonna try and get everything kind of re smitchuated for y'all. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm not using the round that comes with this set. I'll explain in a couple of minutes. I'm gonna grab some of the red and some of the orange and just like the littlest amount I possibly can. Mix them up nice over there and then I'm gonna dilute them. Just a smidge. 
and hopefully we can get a nice uh, sort of peachy blushy color without having to do too much blending out. Nice peachy color without having to blend out too much because with these glycerin based paints blending, well, I'm sure you guys have seen it after how, how many of these videos have I done now? Like five or six of them. I've done a lot of them. And already it's a little unfortunate too, but already I find that these watercolors are just not, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily think, we've been kind of brought up to believe that like Crayola is synonymous with kids art supplies, but really the Yarka set, the Prang set, those are both just better sets. So I'm gonna let this dry as well. All right, guys, this has had more than plenty of time to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on. I'm gonna have to reactivate my pans. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of purple and I'll zoom out and a little bit of blue. I'm doing, well, that might be a lot of bit of blue, doing the shadow color on her eyes. That might be a bit much. So I'm going to use a paper towel and just dabity dab some of the extra up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go in to the orange and start putting down some color. And I'm also going to wet the red and the brown. And I'm gonna use that to mix up the Venetian red that I use as the undercolor for her hair. And I'm gonna think about what color I wanna paint her skirt, her belt. I think I want her belt to be brown and her top. So this is definitely more saturated than their washable watercolors. And these are, according to the package, more prone to staining. I'm not having quite as many of the lift up problems that I had with the washables, but I'm also handling the paint differently since I learned a thing or two when doing the 24 count challenge. If you're looking to get similar effects with your Crayola watercolors, you should keep in mind that I'm not using the synthetic brush they provide with the set. I'm using a much nicer natural hair brush but you guys, oh, look at that. I got some on the background. Let me see if I can clean that up in a minute. My hand overcrossed its boundary. But there are a lot of nice soft mixes on the market, like Squirrel and even uh, Camel, which is not Camel at all. It's a mixture with Pony in it and sometimes Goat. So. I'm gonna clean up that little bit of orange. I'll zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. And this should theoretically just come right up. So I'm using a synthetic brush and I'm using a clean paper towel and some clean water. And I'm just kind of lightly scrubbing at the area. And there I was able to get most of it up. So even though these are supposedly more staining, than regular washables. They still lift very easily. So if you're using them for multi-layer colors, that's something you're gonna wanna think about. I wonder if it is this set that so many brush letterers use because the colors are actually much more vibrant than the washable watercolors. Although I've never seen this set at say Walmart, I would assume you have, you maybe would pick it up from the children's section in an art supply store or from an education specialty store like the educator in New Orleans. And then I'm going to go ahead and gently using a very small brush, dot in her freckles. And I'm using the same color that I used on the undercolor of her hair. And then I will go, oh, I'll go ahead 
and fill in her mouth. And I have to clean my brushes out really good when I finish this series of tests. All right, and now I need to let this dry. So her hair is still drying in places and there is a glycerin buildup on the crayon, but I am going to persist. I'm gonna mix some of that dark red with some orange. And do a little bit of shading on our crayon. And I still need to think about what color I'm going to. I think I want to do something bright for the background. Um, and to do that, I need to let her hair finish drying and then I can do that. Um, but I think I'm going to paint her shirt white. And by doing that, we paint the shadows. So using the same color I'd mixed earlier for her eyes, I'm just going to start Oh, picked up some red. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Just going to start painting in those shadows. I need to be careful because over here on that arm over there, it is adjacent to the area we just painted. So it is very likely that we'd get a color bloom if we're not careful in how we handle our paint. All right. Let's go ahead and give that a chance to dry. So the orange has had a chance to dry. I'm just gonna go straight in with some orange and kind of try to mitigate the transition between the colors. So I wasn't blending it out. I was actually adding another saturated color on top of it. And let's see, it looks like we can start painting the background Hmm, what color do we want to do? I guess we could go with maybe green. And we want to try and get the background painted in kind of early. That way I can choose colors that will sort of pop. Although, we have the red-orange crayon that Kara's holding, so that's going to be the most contrast, which is fine. That works as our focal point. And there's a little bit of a resist. I don't know if it's due to all the glycerin that's in these or what, but it's actually a little bit difficult to get this to go down on the very inexpensive Canton bulk watercolor paper that I am using for this. And I don't know if I've mentioned this in any of the other videos, but I don't demonstrate cheap art supplies to show you guys that look guys, anybody can make good art with cheap supplies because honestly, anybody can make one decent piece with cheap art supplies, sure. But if you want to consistently make good pieces that you feel good about, you're pleased with your progress, and that will stand the test of time, that won't yellow or fade. And when you use very inexpensive watercolors, like these Crayolas, they're going to fade because they're dye-based and they're going to yellow because they use glycerin as a binder. Yes, you can get one or two good pieces out of it. That's not what I'm trying to show you guys. I'm just trying to help you guys if you absolutely have to spend the least money possible. I'm trying to help you and help me determine which of those, which of these supplies would be the best fit for you and the sort of art you make. And my camera is having a fit with that green. It's like Christmas green and my camera's like, no, it's fluorescent green, right? But I was thinking about that while I was filling this in that, um, so many other artists that I respect when they do these cheap art supplies sort of challenge videos or tests or whatever, they're like, see guys, you don't have to have the best art supplies to be able to make good art, which is true, you don't. But let's, let's not present this as something it's not either. Yeah, I can do one decent piece with these. Can I do a whole watercolor comic page? 
not the way I currently do my watercolor comic pages because they are too involved, they require too many layers, and these watercolors just can't stand up to that. So if you want to do bigger, more involved pieces, taking the advice of someone who very blithely can say, see guys, anybody can be an artist, which is true. You don't need the most expensive art supplies in the world, also true. Look at what I can do with these really cheap Dollar Tree whatevers. Just keep in mind that they're not, if you look at all their videos, their bread and butter aren't made with the really cheap art supplies. I would like to think they're not selling commissions unless it's like some specialty, like, I don't know, like uh, some specialty commission where the intention is that they're using these cheaper art supplies and for you to be impressed with what they can do with that. I feel like that's different because you kind of know more what you're getting into. But I can't imagine them selling nicer commissions, full price commissions made with a Crayola set of watercolors. That's just not a professional standard and it's not even gonna last you a year. All right, so I'm going to let this background dry. So the green has had plenty of time to dry. There is a bit of a glycerin-y sheen to it. I don't know if my camera's picking that up. And I just note that because whenever we see that sheen, we know we're not really gonna be able to get additional layers on top of it at least not through glazing. So I was doing some chores downstairs and while I was doing the chores, I decided I want to give her a bright yellow skirt with red dots or maybe purple dots, just something really cute and loud since we've got like this primary theme going on here. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll start on her bow. Now I want some room to develop color and that's going to be hard with this so I'm going to mix light also try to leave some highlights in the paper or on the paper rather that way we get some nice push and pull of color and while that dries i'll go ahead activate the black and i found that unlike other types of watercolors where you want to activate them by spritzing them or putting a drop of water in them or something like that. With these sort of very glycerin-y, glycerin, glycerin full, glycerin-tastic watercolors, you really don't want water just sitting around on them. So a lot of what we would normally do to prepare our palette for painting is just not a good idea here. Oh, I wanna be careful because if that black leaches into that yellow, it's ruined. All right, y'all know the drill. Time to let this dry. Okay, so instead of doing the red dots, I think I am going to do purple. And since I've been doing so many of these reviews lately, I think, ooh, that looks like black, wow. I mean, that that shouldn't be a surprise. It's purple on top of yellow, it tends to make neutral gray. Oh well. Um, since I've been doing so many of these cheap or affordable watercolor reviews, I was thinking I might put together a list of my top tips for using them. That way you don't have to make all the same really dumb mistakes I've made. You can start off the bat really strong. And I'm not even gonna bother to ask you guys if I should do that because I've already started doing it. All right, so I said I wanted to do her belt in brown leather. So I'm just using the brown straight from the pan and I have to be careful because one of those purple dots is adjacent to where the belt is underneath her arm. Really, really careful because my hand wants to shake. There we go, we managed to get it. Oh yeah, we are the champions. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'll zoom out so you guys can better see what I'm doing. I'm gonna grab some of the brown and mix it with some of the black and use that as a dark brown for her hair. 
a little darker than I intended, but that's okay. And I bet you, I bet you we're gonna get a wax resist over here where it's particularly thick. I hope not, but that was the problem I got with the 24 count washable watercolors, which are, to be fair, kind of their own thing anyway. This might be too dark. We're just gonna have to see when it dries, but I'm also noticing that these dye-based watercolors don't necessarily dry a whole lot lighter than they went down under unlike pigment-based watercolors. And then we'll do her eyebrows. And her eyes. All right, darker than I'd wanted. Hopefully it'll dry lighter because she looks a little crazy right now. A little crazy. All right, so her hair is definitely too dark and her eyes are definitely a little crazy. So I'm going to use a paper towel and I'm going to try and probably regret, but I'm going to lift some of this dark brown up. And I'm, that is a very simple procedure here. We're just taking a clean, wet brush, brushing it over the area. Then we're going to take a clean piece of paper towel and it lifts off pretty easily. And then after that dries, I'm just gonna go back in and fill it with that red-brown color. Well, that you guys can't see because it's off camera. And then I'll do the same to her eyes. Just a little bit, hopefully. It's hard when it's so small. Oof. That was wet and it kind of bled out. But it also gave kind of an interesting effect. Let me zoom in. See how it left a lightened circle in her eyes? It's kind of like when we were doing the, um, the burp, burp, peerless watercolors. Sort of like that. So I'm going to go in and fix the bottom layer of her hair, and then I may go in and fix the top layer of her hair. And then while that dries, I'm gonna go in with straight red and darken up some of these areas on the bow. And I wanna be careful because some of the hair is still wet. There we go. All right, still a little crazy looking but slightly less crazy. I can deal with that. And grab some of that dark brown and black that we used on Kara's hair up there. And I'll use it on her belt down here. And I don't know if you guys can tell this, but doing this is just kind of hard. Um, there's a lot of challenge to this. There's a lot of critical thinking. And there also is a lot of experience with other materials that I can bring to the table with this. So if you're trying this at home and you have difficulty doing it, don't feel bad because this is a challenge even for someone who's been watercoloring for almost half a decade or a little over half a decade. And I'm using all the skills that I have from watercolor plus some skills from other, other art forms that I have experience with to try and make this turn out decently well. And that's pretty sad because this is just a little four by three illustration it doesn't it's not really for anything there's no um, importance to it so if you struggle to make these watercolors work for you that's fine and if you're on the other side of the coin if you have cracked the da Vinci code of painting with cheap watercolors that's great too however all that said I wouldn't still wouldn't recommend them to a parent who has a kid who really wants to learn how to do watercolor because they're frustrating to use. They don't actually handle very much like traditional watercolor at all. And there are other cheap options on the market that maybe cost a dollar or two more than this that are gonna bring your kids so much more enjoyment over the years. All right, so I am going to let that hair layer dry and then we'll take another look. All right, guys, I think we are about done 
with this Crayola Education watercolors, extra bright and blendable even. You guys can see some of the glycerin buildup. These handle better than traditional Crayola washable watercolors. And if you insisted on buying Crayola products, at least I, rather I should say, if you insist on buying Crayola watercolors, because I don't actually have a problem with Crayola products in general, and there's quite a few of them that I really do recommend, but I have not found a Crayola watercolor product that I can recommend at this point in time. But if you insist on buying a Crayola watercolor product, I would recommend the uh, education watercolors over their regular washable watercolors. They're a little bit more expensive. They're not as they're not available in as large a sets, but they are easier to handle. The colors are a little more intense and they're not as soapy as the washable watercolors. So I hope you guys enjoyed this affordable, accessible art supply review. Let me know in the comments down below if you've got any questions or if you have a favorite artist who happens to use these watercolors in their work. If there's ever a product you guys would like to see me review or feel test let me know that as well. And if you're interested in learning how to watercolor, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basic series. Thank you guys so much. As always, it was a pleasure. Bye guys.